and the maverick doctor who became the world's worst sex change surgeon. On Channel 4 now, Harvey accuses heavy metal band Saxon of being pedestrian. So, can he fire them up? With strong language from the start, get your act together with Harvey Goldsmith. And the maverick doctor who became the world's worst sex change surgeon. On Channel 4 now, Harvey accuses heavy metal band Saxon of being pedestrian. So, can he fire them up? With strong language from the start, get your act together with Harvey Goldsmith. Show business. Bullshit. Bullshit. Absolute rap. Harvey Goldsmith is one of the most feared men in show business. You fucking creative geniuses, get real. For once in your lives, get real. Alongside Bob Geldof, he was the mastermind behind Live Aid, the biggest gig of all time. He is, without question, one of the great impresarios, certainly in our history. In his 40-year career as a promoter, he's worked with some of the world's biggest stars. But now, Harvey faces his toughest challenge yet. Some audiences are in decline, and that's probably because their entertainment is crap. My job is to fix that. So, giving himself just six months... You're fucking nuts! Harvey's lending his showbiz expertise... I just think you're barking mad. ...to six acts in dire need of a boost. I don't know which way the fucking stage is, then. I don't know either. The only thing he asks in return... Don't waste my time. This week, it's the turn of ageing rockers Saxon, the inspiration behind the movie Spinal Tap. Will Harvey drag them kicking and screaming into the 21st century? Fuck losing the old fans, you've got to get a new audience. He looks like an old drag queen. Or will they be locked forever in bandanas and spandex? In the early 80s, Saxon were rock gods who ruled over the British metal scene, outselling the likes of Iron Maiden and Def Leppard. Last year, 1980, Saxon had five hits. Frontman Biff Byford was the spandex-clad hero who stared down from thousands of teenagers' bedroom walls as denim and leather blared from their record players. But 25 years on, and with a combined age of 250, the band have hit rock bottom. Record sales have plummeted. And when Biff Byford isn't indulging in his passion for acting, Saxon are working the European metal circuit. They've become a bit of a laughing stock, and that's really unfortunate. They were legends, and when bands like this disappear, it's like losing a piece of musical history. I don't think we've met him, have we? Does he play any instruments? No. Maybe he plays the bugle. <laughs> <laughs> or the trombone. <laughs> We've been trying to lift the profile, our management have been trying to lift the profile, and the record company have been trying to lift the profile in England. He has a very, very, very tough job. It's July. And with the temperature hitting the high 90s, Harvey's come to meet the band at the Metal Wave Festival in southern Spain. It's the final date on a 12-week tour of Europe, during which they've played to tens of thousands of Euro metalheads. I don't know what to say about the crowd, really. Um, they look like they could fit in my lounge. They're certainly on many here. Um, probably five, six hundred. A group like that that should be closing this show and headlining it, there should be five times as many people out there, and there aren't, so we've got to figure out what's wrong. This one's a pretty new song. Uh, new this song? one's from 1980. This one's called Motorcycle Man! <laughs> Hello. 
remember this one. It's very strange. Well, there you go. <laughs> that was Saxon. The gig over, it's time for some Saxon-style rock and roll. An after-show supper party in a local tapas bar. I think there's a lot more in you than what you're doing. And I think you should be doing a lot better. And I'm looking at bands, you know, Iron Maiden are still really kicking ass and doing it, and Metallica's still doing 40, 50,000 people a night. So why the hell aren't you lot doing it? What's the difference between Iron Maiden's music and yours? My opinion, it's no better. Now, I like your material. I really enjoyed your material. And I thought the stage presentation was really lax. Lax? Well, actually, this is a fucking cheap shot, actually. That's absolute bollocks, actually. If you think it's not broke, then we shouldn't be trying to fix it. Then that's the end of the subject. It's got to be inside you, because I can't force you to do anything. You need me like a hole in the head. What I want you to do is kind of... I want you to kind of reinvent yourself. I want you to strip yourself back to basics and say, we're going to go out, we're going to win a new audience, because you have to win a new audience. I want to get you to the point where you can sell out every show in England, because everybody's talking about you. That's what I want to try and get you guys to achieve. I can do that. I've done my bit. The rest of it's up to you. Back in London, Harvey's worked out a clear plan of how to take Saxon forward. First is Attitude. I've got to change their sound. They have to modernise their music. I've got to change their image because they look like roadies, not superstars. Currently, they don't have any press in the UK. And that has to change. I'm going to put all this to the test and I'm going to take a big risk at the same time. I'm going to put them on at a homecoming gig at Sheffield City Hall. His business, being a promoter, is not the same as being a band. You can modernise being a promoter. You can change your image, you can change your office, you can change your entire fucking staff. We have a heritage, we, are, we have a history, and we can't just simply fucking change overnight just because Harvey Goldsmith says it's a fucking good idea. Harvey Goldsmith has a vision for Saxon. He wants to put them into the biggest venue that they've played in the UK in the last 20 years. The first part of his plan is to raise their profile by releasing a single. They're going to go in the studio and make a new record, so I've got a chance here. Hopefully, I can find within their material a song that I can attack. Looking for inspiration, the band convenes at their favourite recording studio amidst the cabbage fields of Lincolnshire. Twelve bean stews and nine porno mags later, the band await the arrival of Harvey, who's expecting to hear great things. We never do have the time. Here we are, look. This is in the middle of nowhere, I mean... If I was doing a Simon and Garfunkel album, I think this would be the perfect place, or even a Bob Dylan album. A heavy metal album with tons of energy and a lot of pressure and, you know, headbanging and all the rest of it, it doesn't really add up. It's very strange and quite perverse. That's it. That's it, I'm afraid, yeah. I mean, you mean I've come all the way up here just to listen to those two tracks? <laughs> yeah, I'm just giving you a, um, a flavour of, of the song. And it's, it's, it all sounds pretty good, really. To me, it sounds terribly pedestrian. I, I'm not trying to be rude and I'm not trying to put you down. It just sounds lazy to me, what you've got. I could pick out a hundred tracks that have got that riff in it. 
and that feel of You're going to have to go with that feeling. That's what we like, that's what we do. We did spend some time in the late 80s messing around with commercialism and we lost a lot of fans because of that. So basically, we don't take huge risks with our music anymore. As you say, there's no risk in this. There's no feeling of... I didn't say there was no risk. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. And have you ever written a song? No, I haven't. Well, there you go. And we've written hundreds. So what I'm saying is we're the experts on songwriting in this room. What I'm saying is that on my listening to the music you, that you've done, and you've been in here longer than I thought you've been, to me, this doesn't sound like anything exceptional. Yeah, we're going to work together, right? This, yeah. Let me just say this. If we're going to work together, OK, don't keep coming at us from here. Oh, you've been here that long, you haven't got any lyrics? It's a cheap shot. I didn't right. say that. The truth is that your audience base, however much you think it is, is much smaller than it should be. Mm -hmm. So how do we get that lifted up? That's what this is about. I'm worried about it because they don't really want to change that much. They know they've got to change. I actually don't think they know how to do it. I don't think Harvey's had any hit singles, has he, in the charts? Not to my knowledge, anyway. Has he ever written a song? So. His opinion on, on our songs is his opinion. It's not opinion of an expert. They don't know where they're going. And they want the comfort of what they know. And they're absolutely petrified of moving out of the box. Short of time and worried the band won't change, Harvey comes up with a plan to test them out on a young British audience. So if a younger crowd really buys into the band, it then gives me the confidence to move forward. If the crowd doesn't like them, I don't know what I can do. To pull in the crowds, he's making it a free gig, but he's leaving nothing to chance. I'll be very lucky if any of this audience will have heard of Saxon, let alone like them. So what I've had to do is leak out the fact that the Cure are playing in order to make sure that I've got a big enough crowd. If I'd announced that Saxon were playing, I doubt if anyone would have shown up. Hiya. Hiya. Can you get in? No. The tactic works. An expectant audience is queuing round the block. The Cure, possibly, but I'd, I'd rather have Duran Duran. I hate the Cure. I'm the Cure. We did the Cure. Yeah. If this works, I'm on to a winner. But if it doesn't work, I actually want to get out of here real fast because Biff's going to kill me because I forced them to do it. Where's the fucking door then? I'm just going to go in there and play some fucking English heavy metal. And they can fucking like it or not like it. It makes no fucking difference to me. I'm going to blow the fucking back wall off the place because when we're on stage, we're different people. We all go fucking nuts. And if the audience come with us on the ride, that's great for them. But if they don't, Forget about it. It doesn't bother us. One fucking eye or two, actually. All right, go for the throat, guys. Yeah. I'll come and see you afterwards. I'm sure you will. I don't know, I don't know which way the fucking stage is. I've never seen it before. But... When the band walk out on that stage, they're on their own. They're in control. The audience won't know whether they're the roadies or the band because they don't know who's playing. Hello, Mum. They think it's the cure. Saxon, yeah? We don't know what we're doing here either, but uh, we're going to play some British metal tonight, OK? OK, let's get fucking crazy. This one's called Dogs from War. With a room full of disappointed Cure fans to turn around, Biff has his work cut out. up to that band now to deliver. If they can really win through this audience, I'm on a home run.
Well, well, that was fantastic. I put it there, mate. <laughs> I like that. That was good. I like playing in England. It's good. Well, yeah. look, this is a microcosm. It's just like a little tiny blip for what you can do here. Yeah. I mean, you can see you've got a brand new audience, didn't even know you were playing tonight. That's right. So you've got to build up on that, because this is just the start. And I've always felt that you could. that's what's there for you, you know? Mm. It's great to see young girls in a crowd as well. <laughs> is, that why, is that because I didn't know it was us or what? <laughs> but Saxon aren't off the hook yet. Harvey's rounded up some of the crowd to give their verdict on the band's music. Well, first of all, did you all enjoy it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The first song you played tonight, the dance floor was pretty quiet. I think we were just, like, a little unsure and not quite what's going on. And the second song, bang! Everyone, everyone's <laughs> thrashing around, slamming around. It was great. It was still a bit dated, like... It was still like seeing an 80s band, if I'm completely honest. I think you've got to move on with the times. Like, lyrically, there, there was nothing I could really connect with. Always somebody will say, you know, it's not my type of music. But the thing is, we're a British metal band, and, and we, we're, we have a heritage. You know, it's part of your heritage as well. The day after the secret gig, a bonus result. The first full-page article the band have had in the British press since the 80s. I just got this thing from the Lincolnshire Echo. There Lincolnshire you go. Lincolnshire Echo, eh? Yeah. Really yeah. to us then, Harv. Come on. Is it passionate? Mystery band of sax appeal. Whoa! I like that. <laughs> I like that. It was Lincoln's best-kept secret, so they, they didn't know about it. Everybody had their theories, but it wasn't until the 1980s heavy metal band Saxon stepped onto the stage of the Bivouac Club that they, anyone knew for sure. And so, here's a nice quote, a uh, Echo Music columnist saying, I think the music scene in Lincoln is pretty healthy right now, but Harvey's one of the few people in the music business who you can really trust. <laughs> He's a genuinely nice man. Ooh. Just remember that. <laughs> so there you go. Obviously he doesn't know you then. <laughs> That's the Lincoln Echo. So. It may be the Lincolnshire Echo, but it's just the beginning of Harvey's publicity campaign for the band. I want to find a gig somewhere that's not too small because we've done that, that's not the object of the exercise, but we can see people in your full glory, on a stage that's big enough, doing what you do best. Maybe you should go to Sheffield, and maybe no, we, should do, a, Sheffield we should do a homecoming and think of a gig up there. The whole point of the exercise is, Saxons here is back, they're happening. That's what we're after. <laughs> That evening, to raise the band's profile in the music business, Harvey takes them to the Classic Rock Awards. It's really important that Biff and the band make some presence there and that there's something a bit different and they're back again with a vengeance. Held at one of London's smartest hotels, it's the Oscars of the heavy metal industry. It's the first time that Saxon have been to this event, but Harvey knows exactly how these things work. The whole thing about opportunities like award shows, it's a networking thing, and you've got to grab it while you can, talk to as many people, explain what you're doing, to get your message over, because everybody else is there doing exactly the same. Where's Harvey? I want to come and talk to you about representing them, because I think it's time for their revival. John Jackson. Best agent in this field of music in the business. We write great songs, we've written some great albums. Following Harvey's lead, Biff starts to put himself about. I think I saw you amazing so and you're the only band I've yet seen where three days later my ears were still ringing and I was yeah, like, well, standing at the back. still have that effect. Thomas, the manager, should also be working the room. But daunted, he and the rest of the band remain on the sidelines. Thomas, you should go and talk to John Jackson. Yeah, John, go and introduce yourself. And do some work. <laughs> <laughs> We're working together to try and really bring Saxon back up where they should be. Despite being manager of a potential super band, Thomas just can't seem to get in with the in crowd. Harvey, meanwhile, never misses an opportunity. Can I grab you lot now? Yeah. And do it both so with Ross Halfin. Let's get it set up over Harvey. here. Now you got the full band. Tighten it up a bit. Right. Can I go home now? Yeah. This I'm is running out of voice. <laughs> The next morning, Harvey calls a meeting with Biff and Thomas. 
I was just a bit. Um, I just felt that we, did, you know, I didn't kind of make use of the time properly. I mean, you were doing your bit. I was running around the room doing what I do, is just, which is taking the opportunity, and that's really what it's all about when you go to these events. Yeah. And unfortunately, the rest of the band just stood there like bloody plonkers. And I just don't get it with them. Improvise. And you the same. You weren't out there kind of working a room. What you've got to do, you've got to get out there, kick ass on it. Yeah. That's, you've got to take every opportunity. It's promotion, promotion, promotion. With the band doing little to help raise their own profile, the single takes on more urgency. So it's back to the cabbage fields of Lincolnshire to come up with a track for Harvey to work on. He's not going there. I'm just going to have to stop eating Indians. <laughs> Shall we do a bit of work then? Last night's curry disposed of, Biff embarks on a new sound he thinks could appeal musically and lyrically to a younger audience. If you're going to have a single, that, that is the one that we would take. It's more punk metal than sort of rock and roll. So but that's all right, you know. It's basically about um, uh, sort of gun crime and knife, knife crime. <laughs> Fortnight later, the band sends a demo down to Harvey. He's not impressed. He calls in two leading record producers, Mark Wallace and David Ruffey, to revitalise the sound. Having worked with Travis, Razorlight and The Stranglers, they've got the credentials Harvey wants. I can't account for sales or whatever, but what I want is a song that you guys have produced that people are talking about and listening to. If they buy it, they buy it, but that's what I want. I want people, I want it to be controversial. I want people to, to, to really start talking about it. I want to have a real success story with this mob. Yeah, well, I think we're, we're in agreement, cos, you know, this, we took this on cos it's a great challenge. Yeah, great. But... That's what I, I want to hear. I don't want to end up in some dodgy spinal tap scenario. <laughs> you know what I, mean? I, want, I want them to go away and be really proud of the record that we've made. Harvey thinks we should modernise a little bit. And um, as far as an experiment goes, we'll try it. But I think we, uh, we don't want to change too much. Ladies of the orchestra, are you ready to rock? Yep. The producers get the band down to London to completely rework the single. OK, good luck, studio. Here we go. <laughs> They've got all these weird click tracks going down there and funky rhythms. It sort of sounds a bit odd to me, but there you go. I don't dislike it or like it. It's, it, it's, it's not my thing. It's got nothing to do with me. They're making the fucking single, you know. And if the single's some urban dance track, then we won't release it. We've just got to work at it here with Biff, you know, because he's set in his ways. But the whole purpose here is to give it a new slant, something a bit fresh. So. We can only do that by working with him and pushing him through it, pushing the boundaries a little bit for him. We believe that we already are accessible to a younger audience. We've worked very hard to get where we are at this point in our career, and we're not going to throw it all away just for a few shekels, you know, it's not, it's not us. Hi. How are you doing? Five days later, Biff's version of the single has been radically reworked. Now it all rests on Harvey giving it the thumbs up. Yeah, we like it. <laughs> Hurrah! Hey! Uh -huh. You like it? Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, I quite like it, yeah. You know, it, it's completely different to the original in the production. I like it. Well, it... Cos I think it's fresh. Yeah. It's you. It's not as if they've written, produced and said, here's a track, just, no. just yeah. sing a bit and play no, the guitar. It started from you. Yeah. Your version is very pedestrian. Oh, what a fucking wanker you are, <laughs> actually. Yeah, there's a very fucking pedestrian. <laughs> right, the boxing, boxing me. No, it's not the boxing me. I've been with this guy now for fucking three <laughs> months. He's always saying that this is pedestrian and that's the truth. <clears> oh, I like that, this is pedestrian. You always say something fucking wank on the end of your bit. Yeah. 
<laughs> You're very fucking pedestrian, actually. Your fucking jumper's very pedestrian, and your fucking trousers. That's quite anyway, right. forget about it. Is everything pedestrian to you that's something else? I don't like that fucking word. Don't use it again when I'm here. We can't really bring this lot into the 21st century. Yeah, but we don't want to lose the old fans, though. You fuck losing the old right. fans. You won't lose the old fans. They like the music. They're there. Yeah. But you've got to get a new audience. Well, when you listen to two versions of the song, it is pedestrian. At the end of the day, Biff, you know, sprouts and shouts, but behind it all, he's actually listening. We may end up in the ring before the end of this uh, saga, but so what? Harvey Goldsmith plans to relaunch Saxon with a gig at Sheffield City Hall. For a venue of this size, tickets would normally go on sale eight months in advance. Harvey's given himself just eight weeks. My neck's on the line here um, because normally um, Saxon wouldn't be selling venues of this size. Um, it is a real challenge, but I'm prepared to have a go at it. For Saxon, it's a trip down memory lane. This is where they played their first major gig 25 years ago. This isn't your average concert hall. It's a shrine to rock and roll. Many a show have I done in this place. And many a show I have as well, actually. Hey, they're all here. The, the Who and... Yeah. Nazareth, a big, Nazareth, big band here. Nazareth, another band here. Yeah. Thin Lizzy. And God knows what else. This was our sort of uh, big gig when we first played it. We did three nights here on the Wheels of Steel tour. It was yeah. like fucking playing Wembley. Because, <laughs> you know, we'd only been in the yeah, audience yeah. up to that point. Yeah. I hope all of you are up for this, because it's a big challenge for me. I've got to sell it out. All you've got to do is go on stage and play, but I'm going to need all? you... Oh. <laughs> oh. Back off. <laughs> yeah. But, but I'm going to need your help in the meantime, because I, I've got a lot of tickets to sell for this. 1,800 tickets, to be precise. It's a major challenge, and while the band are beginning to sound the part, Harvey's decided they need to look the part, so he's sending them off to see a stylist. I think Harvey should go see a fucking stylist, actually. Don't you? Yeah, I'd like huh? that. Yes. Come on, Douglas, do you think Harvey should see a stylist? Probably, yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a fucking rock promoter. Should a bit, a bit more rock and roll. Whoa! I don't... I'm not going to dress up like a pantomime horse or something, so... That'd be all right. That would, as actually. As long as I'm the front. <laughs> There's no fucking way I'm going in the back. <laughs> What Harvey wants and what we want is two different things. Harvey wants to be seen to be uh, changing uh, our image slightly, but we're not really into that. I mean, we treat that as a bit of a, it's a bit of a laugh, really. We're not going to sell out just because Harvey wants, wants us to be more, you know, modern in brackets. <laughs> I hate this shit. Looking at clothes, it's like naff. So if These trousers look like shit. Oh, shit is not something I would qualify them with. <laughs> oh no, we don't want fucking yeah. suit jackets on. No negativity, boys. No negativity. People who are very used to looking a certain way don't like to be taken too okay. far away from it. These trousers are ever so tight. And I should get my balls in this. <laughs> look like a fucking pimp. <laughs> there we go. Take it all off, baby. I like that, though. That's a sort of Sonic the Hedgehog look. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like it because I've picked it. No, it that is not true. <laughs> I'm not one of those people who won't try it your way first, but if we try it your way, then afterwards we try it my way. Pick one and be happy. Two hours later, the stylist spell is cast. She's a bit of a star, isn't she, there? Stylist. Okay, here's a test one. <laughs> the next day, Biff and band manager Thomas are summoned to Harvey's office. What is it? I, I don't want to be rude. What is this you're wearing? It makes you look 